is Michi Hoye. Welcome to today's edition of Sim Racing Academy, where we're going to have a session together with Stan Donnit from the Sim Pit Pit Crew. So, um, yeah, the Sim Pit Pit Crew currently uh, trying to get ready for the 2019 24-hour Daytona race in the 2019 Sim Pit Rigmo Tech Endurance Team. And um, yeah, Stan Donnit came over to me and. Uh, asked me for a meet and greet together with doing two hours of practice and uh, we're going to do exactly that right now so um, i think he's just waiting for the doc to come in and once he's back uh, talking to me um, we're gonna quickly just check so stan you're back yes sir okay um the so session is hosted and it has two hours and i'm currently joining it so you can also join the session. Myself as well. So um, we've pretty much done some decent setup work so far. And uh, we're not trying to have a look into the setup really if we still do. I need to probably put a picture on real quick because um, despite this session is some sort of semi-public right now um, and becomes public later, uh, probably before the 24-hour race, uh, we don't want info to be leaked out. So Stan, Donnit already connected on the server. That means we're good to go basically. And uh, I will take my notes, also finish up a little report later on and um, yeah, see how things go. Probably just need to wait. Um, just tell me as soon as you're um, on the server, please. I know you're loading in. I'm loaded in and I loaded that BO4 setup from last. Oh, uh, that's great. Okay, you can go out then. Can I spot you somehow? Do you have that enabled? I believe so. Get yourself warmed up and I'll try... Uh, I need to be your friend on my race and I'd, like, we're gonna do it this way. So, um, stand on it on his way to to do uh, some little warm up laps, and then we're gonna see um, how things get on. I'm just going to tell him about the sort of schedule we're gonna do now. And guys, if you wanna have a say on something, uh, feel free to operate the chat. Um, despite there is no chat being um, shown here on the live video, um, I get and talk with you boys and girls obviously <clears throat> so Stan you do like four or five laps to get into the groove a little and meanwhile I'm gonna be silent and take notes and see what I can see note what I see and um, then be hopefully be helpful. Sounds good.
and dead. <laughs> okay, so um, I got a couple of minor things. Um, so it, overall, it isn't too bad, obviously. Um, lap time wise, it's just yeah, you, you're not you're not that far away, really. Um, once you get these little things on, that will boost a lot of the lap time because this is a very specific circuit. Um, speaking of specific, you probably already heard about the slow in, fast out, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, on this circuit, it is way more important than on other circuits. Like it is, first of all, it is important everywhere, but um, in this circuit, it is so specifically important. Um, because you have the turn six that goes backwards on the band, uh, on the bank. You have this turn three that uh, marks the back straight, uh, that enters the back straight between turn, well, four. You can do flat out, so between five and three, that's all a flat out area for ten seconds or something. Um, um, and then you have this kind of stupid bus stop chicane. And uh, we need to be happy because this bus stop is not as retarded as the Charlotte Roval. Anyway, um, so in this kind of session or in this kind of um, condition where this track is, the slow out, uh, slow in, fast out principle needs to be obeyed at like really all time. It does not really make sense for turn one really, um, because the sprint to turn three is like, or turn two and three, it's not the biggest one, but you should definitely um, follow through it. Uh, turn three, also I think turn five, but mainly turn six and the bus stop. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through a number of things. Uh, you remember that in your last lap, your bus stop has been sort of the quickest ones, I guess. I do not have a lap time delta, but I guess you gain some time through bus stop and afterwards. Yeah, I took. I think I took more curb on the last bus stop. You not only took more curb, you also were like a 2 or 3 kph slower on the second apex on the right hand corner. So the first three laps, the same happened then in turn 1. Uh, you entered the corner a, just a tiny bit too fast really. So not in the right angle and with 3 or 4 kph too, too quick, you some sort of understeered into, into the grass. And then you started to turn on massively on the wheel trying to correct it. And that is something you should never do on iRacing, basically on, not on any other sim, but let's say in R Factor or something, that it kind of works, that puts you back on the track, but here in iRacing, um, the car just keeps understeering, and all you do is basically you, you lit your tyres and you use them for no reason, basically. So, um, in order to get back on track, um, I would recommend to either lift genuinely on the on the throttle or also try and tap in the brakes because that might unsettle the rear or in general just uh, makes the the weight go a little bit to the front and with the weight on the front the car found grip and then should do a little better turning just a little and that might just be enough um, and obviously not less painful to the tires than going into full lock um, okay. so we try to remember for bus stop, we go in a little slower. We um, we do not care about the left-hander of the first chicane at all. What we're going to do there, we're going to take the left-hander as an approach for the right-hander. Because for the right-hander, you want to maximize the angle. Um, if you have a bus stop chicane right uh, right ahead of your, um, of your screen, I'm going to simply draw... Um, draw one and put it into the camera for you um, so you can see it on the video later uh, gonna do a very basic one here but at this point um, it should become quite clear once I'm finished with drawing that all you really need is the apex of the second or the second, uh, or the second turn. Um, can you see me on Discord? Can, uh, you have access yeah, to a I'm second. Yeah, I'm going to the last. 
Okay, so if you go into the live stream, that is perfectly well doing it. And I'm uh, just going to do a different picture for that. There you go. So, if that is the bus stop and uh, the wall is right here, so that is where the wall goes, you sort of skip that first, um, the first left-hander, that one. You just skip it. Okay. You just don't care about the entry. You just don't care about the optimal exit speed because that is not a natural line as you would take it through the uh, the first left hander. I'm already on that green line. I'm already turning right, right on the apex of the left hander for the second apex. I see that. And this is what you need to get entirely right. So you're not allowed to go too wide out of the right hander because if you go too wide, you understeer into the grass like here. If you go too low, you're gonna clip that curb, uh, that one, too early as well. So there is a right speed, right angle, that's gonna do the job here. And this is why we're all focusing about that apex. That is where you need the right angle and the right speed. All the other things you don't really need to care about. You don't, you, you, know, you don't win the time in the first turn, you only lose or win it in the second, in the second turn. And turn three and four is basically just to come back to the banking and it's flat out anyway if done right in a second so you don't lose or don't gain anything. So the quality of your bus stop chicane really depends on the second right hand apex of the first chicane. That is what we focus on for bus stop. Um, right. Turn one, I need to see furthermore... Um, Furthermore, runs through it before I can tell something really. Uh, wasted oh. white boy, thank you for the subscription. I feel like I'm kind of struggling on the break point for turn one. Yes, um, if you go, also can look it up on the stream. Oops. You see them, the markers on the floor, I guess. And if I put up the chopper like right now, that is the second last, and that. That upcoming one, uh, that one that is right underneath here, that is the the last one of these markers on the banked straight. I tend to do the break in, to to start the break in, like right here in the middle of those two. I'm not sure if I can okay. somehow scroll out a lot. Yeah, that looks well. Just yeah, right where the car is. Um, okay. I do the I do start the braking, and then you also see the rubbered line going across here. Try to follow that really. So you really want to turn in around here, line up the car. Oh damn! Yep, just as you went through it here, and then go a little wide again, like there. Um, so even further like up to here and then you turn in nicely for that left hander uh, because at this point the car should really come from here and look there that is here is where you really need to be on the inside because then you can take that little second apex and the little um, tight left sweep of the corner a lot more straight and have a straight run through two and up to three also, note for three, see how much space you leave on the left hand side. Usually I would say don't hesitate and uh, use the extra meter on the left here as soon as there is no car coming from the pit. Because it's really worth it, you maximize the angle through turn three. Um, see here, you turn in that early um, and imagine you just come from up, up here and you go like there. It depends whether this one is more grippy on the server or on the tarmac than the outer line. That is something probably that needs to be checked. But that is really what you want to have is you go here and then go to the inside. And uh, really importantly, you do it just about right. I would just hit the apex here, put the car like more like this in that regard, if that somehow works. So what you want to have now is um, you want to have a good exit 
on that little stress here and you don't want to clip that curb because once you clip that curb the, the car jumps into the off track I mean it's no off track basically but um, the car simply jumps and then you, you hit that that other curb here in the back and that can kill you so you really want to stay close to that white line okay. basically just as you do it you're just sliding too much here which gives the arrow there but that is basically what you want to have um, that is for turn three uh, turn four I'm not sure I think it is a sound bug if you take this flat out right yes yeah that is a flat out turn anyway and for turn five um, I have to admit turn four uh, not turn four lap four that was the lap where you got turn five absolutely spot on um, where's the cockpit? I think it was turn f uh, lap four. No, yeah, not sure why it's doing the wrong one. Sorry. So looking at turn five, that is very good. What you do here, you're some sort of centered here. You sort of a little skip the first apex, which is no problem at all, because what you do next is very good. You point towards the second apex right here, and that is really good, because that is where you all be full throttle. It is the same kind of exit as you would have it in Silverstone, um, the long 180 right-hander. And it's just such a narrow corner, so what you do here is quite perfect. You come up to the middle, you are so patient with applying the throttle, and you just wait a half a little second more until here where the car really has more turn and you can go flat out um, sensitively though um, for the sprint up to turn six and turn six your major problem is right here the car should point a little bit further to the left like now that is the right not the right one that's not also not sorry i'm messing on the cams here like that is what the car should do. It's just six degrees more. It's not much, but um, you know you come in right here in this area where the car should then be. Damn. Let me do this on another cam. Uh, camera. That one. The car should be just. I can't move here, can I? Oh dear. The car should be right here. You can also see you're a bit of that rubbered lines here. And I would even stay more inside because what you do right here is just extra, extra way. And the speed difference is just minimal. So what you want to have is a slow and safe run through the turn here. And I would even keep patient with the throttle until like really the ending of the curb with the rear end to be at the rear end of the curb or at the new tarmac or the different tarmac here so just here that is where i would start hitting the throttle so you ha don't come as wide you stay more on the inside and very important is you stay settled with the car because every little slide here is costing you like half a tenth easily I can do some running also on the track if you want to. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm game for whatever. Okay. Let me just quickly get on. And if you wonder, I have a pain in the back right now, so uh, that is why I have a warming pillow on which I'm sitting. So I keep talking to you while I, while I do racing and driving, and then we we gonna have a look where we end up. Oh. Some stupid off tracks. So starting about turn three already. Take it from the very outside. Oh shit. 
Sean was right. For the night, the car absolutely is massive, but the braking is very hard in those temperatures. Anyway. So that is your turn five, where you do exactly what you did. And then here's the turn six. So you break it early enough. Stay in the inside. Mm, too much on the throttle already. There's some little bump you don't want to hit. Um, because it just simply unsettles the car. So that is if you're too far on the inside. Also your braking is good here for bus stop. I usually do it on that left uh, right hand yellow thing. And you don't care really about yeah that was too quick as well. So I need to I need to do some adjustment. I'm still used to that yesterday session in the dark. Come on, go away. So turn one right in the middle here. Kiss that inside line, go straight, turn in. Let's have another try on turn three then. Could still go a little further on the left hand side. Well, I think you kind of see what I'm what I'm talking about. So you always want to favorize the exit of a turn. Also, I tend to skip that first apex completely to just be okay here for the second. Once again, turn six. A little slower. Just not as wide, we want to really be on the inside very short, shortly again. This really, you need to take that six, turn 6 so slow as well. Usually you can go through it much quicker, but then you simply go on the steer wide. Mm. Car doesn't react too well. So I'm also too fast in this bus stop. But I think you see it from, from when I go through the left-hander of the bus stop chicane. I completely skip the perfect line there. All I'm looking at, I, I just try to see to find that I make the apex of the left-hander and then immediately uh, concentrate on the approach for the second. Yeah, the car is extremely twitchy right now, thanks to the conditions. See that curb wants to kill you there. We need to do a lot of fixing on the rear end of the car, to be honest. So in those conditions when the rear end is as loose as we have it right now, going the wider line is definitely not the worst opportunity or not the worst um, thing you can do. You will find out though, once we're running in the night, um, that you have a lot better stable car there in turn six and then you should go further to the inside so that was better through bus stop you really have to completely ignore this left hander maybe i can explain it a little bit better next time around since i was focusing really to get it right say again i think i'm understanding i think i'm understanding what you're talking about with the bus okay so straight, straightening out the left-hander and not even worrying about it being there. Just yeah. On the apex of the right. More or less, that is exactly what I, what I'm trying talking about. 
Oh, this car simply doesn't stop turning. Also be gentle on the throttle. The more gentle you are, the less the traction control needs to work at it. So that is exact. You see it right now on the pit delta or on the lap time delta. That little slide that just came from going wrong over the bump and uh, just with too much turning input still on the car, it has taken away three tenths from me. Yeah, and now I have overdone it. You see the car was in a slide still and that was the reason why I was turning right for the second apex while still being on the brakes. So that is the exact movement you have. You have the weight going to the front, you have the rear end being loose weight wise, weight load wise. And uh, that is what most of the time gets a car into a spin here on I racing on the braking approach. Um, as you need the weight to be right where you need to grip and uh, sadly even for turning you need to grip everywhere on the car not only at the specific at a specific point you also hear the traction control work so you know exactly when you're over pushing on the gas there is some rumbling noise in the background Dead. Ah, damn. Let's see. Yeah, you want to be so straight towards the bank on the exit strip of that turn six. So, this is the final approach for me through uh, bus stop, and then we see to get you back on the track. Yeah, also too quick. I was just going too quick. I know that, that, that this... That is why I hate bus stop chicanes. Like, they are so inviting to go so quick through them. Uh, it is just simply, most of the time, not really possible. Alright, you can go out back on track. I'm gonna jump on your camera then. As for the outlap, we're going to have a look at the nice um, livery. <clears throat> uh, you have already damage on the front left, so I will probably re uh, request a new car. Not sure well, of you. That, that little bitty tiny touch on the, I guess the, the yellow. Yeah, that those don't kill the, the car. Yellow, don't drive over. Yeah, if you hit them, you can straight away go box again because they uh, raise the draft and they lower the top speed quite significantly.
Yeah, that looks better. You can probably go a little further towards the inside, but take your time, man. Yeah, if you wouldn't have turned before, the little turn you did before straighten out again, it would be quite a good approach. Yeah, good from the line, just need to brake a little earlier. The speed probably more likely stays the same. very good there also don't uh, what you tended to do the first five laps is generally do a lot of uh, input on the turning wheel or steering wheel just try to be smooth and gentle and only as much as necessary what is your personal best if I may ask I think a 38.4 from but yesterday. That was last night. Okay. Yeah, I would surely deduct a good two seconds for the heat. So that is a 40.4 in equivalent. Yeah, you won't hit the pitch perfect every lap, but just trying to get at it will do the job. Yeah, that was better. And that crazed the little massive turn on the wheel didn't do a lot of damage On the approach to turn three, I would exactly break where the the skid marks or the uh, the track the track paints stops. So there's four dashed lines, and when the final fourth dashed line ends, I would hit the brakes. But I want to be to the left side of those dashed lines, right? Not yet. You can still approach them in a in a crossed way on the way to the left still. You have to do some trade breaking for turn 3 anyway. 
despite the car doesn't like it too much. Um, yeah, you need to go a little wider in the connecting road between 2 and 3. I want to call it 2 and 3, usually it is 9 and 10. So the entry is 8, 9 and the exit is 10, 11. So with the, on the exit out of 9 you go, need to go a little wider to get a better angle for 10. is better. Probably still broke too late. Yeah, I need to take it easy on the brakes there, sadly. Also, you need to really be patient here with the throttle apply. Um, I'm gonna explain that a little more in the report, that's for sure, but you really need to make the car pointing towards the back straight of this infield part. Um, so you really need to be patient with the throttle in three. It is. Yeah, better. The perfect bus stop is characterized um, thereby that you do one turn in for the second part of the chicane so for the right hander back towards the uh, chicane leaning your back towards the, the banked area as being one yeah, single I'm, turn I'm turning in multiple times
Yeah, you're slowly but surely getting there. Pretty much Brandon, he's also getting towards it. Apart from the slide, this turn 3 was good as well. Did you see now that the hard turn on the wheel during turn 5 has brought the car into a slide which has costed you time whereas the tiny and sensitive info on the steering wheel in the exit of turn 6 has kept it stable? Yep. Yeah, you need to make sure to get that in your mind. And now you can also start um, taking more speed through the bus stop as this is the next step of improvement then. Yeah, better, definitely better. Yeah, you, all, you went a little too fast out of the initial six and then also went wide on the exit back towards the banking. Okay. All you need there is the, the right balance between maximizing the speed and the way. Yep, a lot better. That should really boost your lap time delta. Yeah, I just gotta remember not to turn in too hard on the first right there. I guess it's nine. Yep. I've been cranking the wheel there. So despite that mistake, a 140.6, that mistake being done in turn six, then the car is horrible to drive. Let me, f let us fix the car a little. Um, alright, I would do the following. On the chassis. Put the spring rate in the back a click lower. Okay. And also two clicks lower on the low speed dampening in the back or even make it three clicks the compression or rebound the compression dampening not the rebound please okay the rebound would be for the other direction and at All the right, so yeah at the front 13 clicks now for low 13 speed exactly compression. and at the front the low speed rebound dampening on 14 please 
That will cause a little more on throttle understeer uh, if the rear is planted, but should boost the general uh, car behavior on the exit. No okay. game. And then have a go again. Also for turn 1, try to line up the car in a straight line speed, hitting like the apex when there is that little little life notch towards turn 1 then, that is right where you exit the banking. So make sure to hit that on the inside, but then have a straight break in towards the exit line of turn 1 before turning in. What you do often is like you turn very slightly towards left. And that uh, tends to, to lock up the front left, and if you really lock it up and you keep locked it up, you're simply gonna understeer through this corner and turn three in that lap. Yeah, sort of. A little early on the turning, but otherwise great. Car looks stable now. Yeah, it feels more planted. That is exactly what we wanted. That is looking great so far. So if the car balance stays like this during the stint and during the day, uh, that might be opportunity for B06, the uh, B05 then. Brilliant bus stop. That is just brilliant. Save that to your mind and keep it. Oh, good. That surely is going to be a 39. Yeah, 39860. And you still but it drift out too wide there, didn't it? Yeah, you're just a little too late on the turn in and a tiny bit too fast. But other than that looking good. Your turn three is looking good as well, very controlled now. So ultimately he would be into the 37s in yesterday's session. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the temperature is doing a good one and a half to two seconds difference. Not really too early but too hard. This car is difficult to drive in that aspect though.
very good approach. Yeah, not uh, not so much there. Yeah, too too early on the throttle. Need to be a little bit more patient. That was a brilliant turn five. Can go a little early on the throttle there. Yeah, I need to be careful on that one, but other than that, really good. See you missed the turn 8 apex now, so you may need to make sure to be right on it, go over the curb, and gotcha. uh, maximize your approach into 9. Too aggressive uh, now on the rear. Say again? Yeah. Yeah, with a little less turning, that would be an even better result of that uh, bus stop, but it looked good. Looks good. Also make sure to stay down on the banked area and also on the way back to the start finish line you always tend to go up up the banking. Try to stay low until the start finish line and then go like mid mid height. Yeah just like that.
That is a good turn one. All you need now is a softer exit. Same here. Still wonder whether the uh, the temperatures are skyward rocketing. Also, you guys have seen it has not been a perfect lap. Uh, last time around and it just did it in the 40-0 uh, so we're gonna have a list of laps later on Yeah, too much grass there. Yep. And still, with that mistake, 41-2. There was a brilliant save, Brandon. So Yeah, Brendan, I was thinking about exactly that. Okay, can you do... Just come out of the ki uh, pit with the new car, please. I think that tyre temperatures in the rear goes... goes banana. And I think I might have an... We need to have a fix ready for this. Try to be once again smooth and exact on what you do with a car, and I think you can then boot smash your 30, your 39 even further. Just don't overdrive it. Don't want, uh, don't try to to do anything pitch perfect. It's more like try to get it done in the right manner. That will really boost the lap time here, and then try to stay in that rhythm so we can see. Um, how the time, how the, the, um, yeah, the balance and everything develops. Because right now, when you come out of the pit, I feel like the car's really blunted, and like three to four laps into the session or into the stint, it just goes boom. Okay.
Wow, yeah. That's a perfect turn one. That is a brilliant turn three. Yep. Yep, Brendan, I feel so too. This is an absolute flyer right now, I can tell you. If he doesn't do bad things, and that lap looks really, really good. Anyway, please keep going to the line. Uh, don't care about the... You have a slowdown? Off track. I don't have a slowdown, I have an off track. Okay, just keep going. Because we need to see what the lap time is. Lap was good. Wow, yeah, 39.5. So the second lap seems to be good as well. Still on the on the temperatures. Also this turn 3 has been a good one. Also try to be as quickly as possible to the double yellow line after the uh, after the bus stop. Six. Okay. Yeah. Both after turn six and after turn eleven. Another thirty nine. Great. He's really getting at it now.
then is really starting to nail it. Brandon absolutely true. And he, even right now he's still on a low 40. So he, he got the lines right now. All he needs to do now is trying to maximize them. And that is something that needs to be done over soul practice, laps and laps and laps and laps until you get the feeling for everything. Feeling is something you, I can't teach. I can tell him where to go, how to break, how to get them lines, how to position the car. But sadly I cannot tell him how to feel things or how to learn feeling what is right, what is wrong. He definitely got the, the grip out of the, the bus stops. Yeah, visual memory um, is a lot of a factor in that. I think that bus stop might have even given him the chance to make this a, a high 39 still. Ah, too much mistakes in the first turn and the first sector anyway, but let's see. Yeah, Brendan, I will. Uh, surely ask him some questions soon. Right now, I just want him to to drive, and uh, this will be important information for the sim pit pick group. Like the back end gets pretty greasy. Yeah, that is exact. Just as I um, as we were speaking, I thought exactly that. Yeah, I saw your turn one, and I thought the same. Yeah, we need to we need to fix the setup wise, but but. Personally, that is not the, the target of our session right now, unless you want to work on it. Well, whatever's going to help, man. I mean, it's not going to help me to run this setup if it's, uh, if it's extremely greasy and it's not what we are going to run. So, mm. I'm game for doing whatever we need to do. Well, whatever I say, when we start working on that issue now, you always have to do like five or six laps and probably I should do some runs as well so that is why I'm saying this is not the purpose of of what we're doing right now I mean as, as generally speaking you have any questions so far to what you've learned or to what I tell you um, I, mean, I, I feel I feel like the breaking the breaking points like the entry to one I was I was struggling with that a lot and I feel like I've got a direction to go now and something to target every time I go into one now. I have, I have something logical instead of guessing and trying to get the car to go through there properly. Um, the bus stop, uh, that's just, I'm just going to have, it's just going to take laps and get the feel for the turn in and the proper position of the car. Turn six, I'm still probably struggling, I feel like, with turn six the most and maybe three. Um, but I think my struggle with three is I've been used to being on the right side of that white dotted line instead of the outside of it. So I'm just having to get the, the look down a little better there. I mean, there's, I still got things I definitely need to work on for sure that I'm not comfortable with, but I feel a whole lot more comfortable right now and I have a direction to go. That sounds good then. Um, so yeah. I just set the very same. Your driving lines are now pretty much in. So you really, you know what you do. You do it actively and not out of luck. You do follow your lines very controlled. All you need to gain now is the sort of the right feel. And it's just what I said. Feel is something I cannot teach. I can tell you where to go. I can tell you where to brake. I can tell you how to turn the wheel. But um, the feel of what can do the car around that line, what can, how early and how hard I can get, can get on the throttle to not get into a spin but get for perfect exit speed. Um, yeah, that's, that's another thing too, is my throttle application. I currently have, uh, I currently need to make a, make a modification, or not a modification, but a swap to my pedals. I have my damper on the brake instead of, and I'm going to put it on the throttle to see if I can have a little more gradual more consistent throttle application that way 
but I just haven't gone around to do that. I need to do that after this is over with. Hmm. Okay, not sure if I would do it, but yeah. I kept saying one weird sentence in in one of these sessions. I, I, I told that guy to apply the throttle um, aggressively sensitive, something like that. Or was it? Um, yeah, I think it was aggressively sensitive. Um, with that being said, um, you need to wait long on the actual apply of the throttle, but then you need to be right early, so you maximize the exit speed. You need to be early in the throttle, but sensitive. Yeah, aggressively, um, yeah, with a lot of aggression, but sensitively in the in the way you, you give the inputs, because this car is not really designed to take shocks. So a shock like a sudden movement on the steering wheel, shock like too hard on the brakes, a shock like a sudden full throttle while still turning, that is what the car cannot do. And uh, this needs to be obeyed. Gotcha. I need to pick. I need to pick up the throttle a little. Well, I need to pick it up early, but be very smooth with it. Is what you're trying to say? Yes, sort of. Um, I mean, earlier. No, not not early as you do right now. It is just generally speaking, after positioning the car, you need to get early on the throttle again. Um, like what you did a lot in turn 3 is you sort of outbroke yourself just a tiny little bit, went in too quick, you missed that apex and instead of lifting completely of the throttle to let the car turn and position it for the exit, you some sort of gave it a 20% throttle input or something. Okay. And that was too early or the, the constant 20% throttle was just keeping kept it on the, the steer. Pushing. Yeah, kept the front pushing. And what you do if you release fully on the throttle, the weight goes to the front, the car turns around, and then at some point you're gonna slowly apply 10% and 20%. And while you would still be on the 20 constantly percent of trying to make the turn, that is now the point where you go aggressively sensitive on the throttle, like 30, 40, 50, and then you probably can smash it or something. Uh, well, not smash it, but fully apply it. All you need to do now is do it slowly, do it sensitively, do it with a lot of feel and sensitive. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm gonna down. grab a new coffee. I'm down, I'm down for, uh, for you to make a few changes to the setup if you want to try to remedy that overheat at the back tires. I need to step away and use the restroom. Um, well, we can do that. It is just... I can't guarantee that it works. I understand. I mean, if you want to do a few laps on it, that's perfectly fine by me. I don't mind watching. I can learn watching too. Okay. So let me uh, let me do some changes without without you getting getting the latest version of the set. Um. And then I gonna. As soon as I think it it works. I'm gonna send it over. Okay. I'll um, be right back. Yeah. Fair enough. I grab the coffee next time he is out. <clears throat> what else could I do?
looking for the rear not to heat up as heavily. I have no idea whether that works, but I'm just guessing. Is that really my lap time, Delta? All right, I've tracked it. I'm back. Copy. <clears throat> I'm already trying to heat up the tires a bit in the back to see whether it is an overall problem still or whether I somewhat fixed it because the car doesn't feel too bad
Okay, need to do further work in. But I think I'm on something. Got further questions so far? No, not at all. Oh, I have stupid spiking on the paddles, I need to work on that. Got this me. <laughs> that turn six. Fuck me. Sorry. You took too much curb there, didn't you? No. No off track. It was just pitch perfect. Oh wow, uh, okay. But I'm so somehow losing straight line speed. And I don't know why that is. I feel like maybe scratching on the ground. But it's just odd because in the um, we use the the setup heights and the um, in the BO4 setup. Right now it seems like I'm not having the same straight line speed. Need to do further double checking. Missing some straight line speed. Let me check. I have kind of an idea what this is due to. Have you saved the setup you're currently running as a BO5? Uh, because I make I do make mine one a BO6 then. I I saved that as a BO4 CHA as in chain. Okay. Yeah, it's just we need to be able to um, to keep them separated. Okay. Did a little mistake. Nothing too severe. I'm sorry that I'm black boxing this now, but sort of have to. Okay, fingers crossed then.
I think we may have to drop off the one or other tent here on the straight for a better overall lap time though. Just guessing right now as I haven't done a complete lap or a complete stint. We really need to get up this drivability of the car. like it's more planted yeah but it looked like this in lap 2 still with you as well so I kind of need to wait and, and see how it feels in like lap 4, 5, 6 I pretty much agree with you though I mean, all we're looking for is competitive and uh, con consecutive lap times. It, it is still... I mean, I'm in lap 3 right now, um, it is still somewhat landed, but it feels like going off a little towards the rear. Um, if it stays like this, it's pretty much manageable though. Not as uh, violently and as, uh, as severe as beforehand. Uh, dead. <clears throat> Let's see, moment of truth is the next two laps.
So yeah, Rear's going off again. Just as I said, not as severe though. So you see the slides, but it is not as suddenly stepping off and then the entire grip is gone. So I'm entering lap 5 in the next one, and then we're probably going to see the real quality of it. I believe it is fixed, well not fixed, it is improved, it is not entirely fixed, and I'm also not sure if it is fixable at all, to be fair. No, honestly, if you ask me, it looks a lot better than beforehand. <clears throat> so I would say it is improved. It looks like it's more manageable. Yeah, exactly. I will go and try to do a clean lap. No. Nearly dead. dead. Yeah. No traffic collected you, you're dead. Well, okay. Your point. We need to do some fixing on the gears. I would like to lengthen the fifth by a click. So we are in full thoughts or full power mode in sixth. Let's see though, just one lap. Uh, the tire is definitely lit now. And once again I fuck up turn one like so bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... The thing is, I'm just getting slower. It's like I can't do anything against it. I'll look at the at the turn, trying to not do it too bad, and then look at the top, and I just lost another four tenths or something. Please let me do one other lap. No, you go right ahead, man. <laughs> I get frustrated at such cars. Believe it or not, I feel like I'm learning just watching. Happy. Yeah. Okay, I need to take it more easy around there. Full stop.
It's definitely more manageable. And I can tell you also why that is. Um, I took away a lot of camber on the rear end. So, speaking of camber... Um, where is a good... I need some good material. Hold on. No, that would be too much of fake adverts. Right. <clears throat> we have this as a track. This has a track. Do what? Uh, um look at the stream best of things. I have okay. a like a little boat here as a track. And um that is the tire. This is sort of zero degree camber so we have the entire width of that here standing on the ground make, I'll make it like this that is probably the best way to see it so that is zero camber zero degrees what we're now running is five degrees of camber which is more like this so you now see as soon as the tire heats up in the third fourth lap the entire heat of, let's say, 110 degrees is relying on that little strip here. That's little, that is what is here on the border. Right now, with less camber, we have more connection on the ground. Saying the area of where the weight is on the car, or where the weight of the car, or where the, where the contact between tire and the road is like three or four times the size than beforehand, which in first place spreads the temperature more, keeps the temperature a little lower, just a little, and <clears throat> once it starts sliding, it not slits over the little the little contact, but over a wider range of rubber, giving it more resistance, giving it more about grip. So yeah, that is basically it. And that is um with, with a little less camber, you have not the twitchy rear on the throttle because you also take the momentum or the, the possibility of the tire to uh, to deal with sideways or lateral movement. That is also um, the more tire or the more area of rubber is on the ground, the more possibility the tire has to <coughs> take that uh, lateral grip. More contact patch. Exactly. Alright, I wanna... For the final lap, or for the final runs... Uh, share you... The BO6, I would like you... To... Add the... Um, Hold on. Yep. There is. Uh, I share the BO6 right now again. I'd wish you to load it up, do a lap, and or do two laps and try to improve your personal best because I know you can do it. The one with the two in it. Hmm. I see a Mitchie Hoyer, everyone, two, BO6. There's two BO6s up there, basically. Oh, wait. There. Now you should see a 07. Yeah, we don't need to, uh, to be economical on the numbers, do we? Yeah. All right, I'm on you. I think you have just a little bit more than nine minutes. <clears throat> Eight minutes to go. So that is a full period of uh, until you heat up the tires. So let's see whether you can also prove them tires to be working better.
you're doing the bus stop a lot better than I do it. No joke. Alright, so we want to see what he is um, able to do, and I'm pretty sure he can do very well. Whereas this first lap is probably not. Uh, front camber is two, one, one, one point nine or something. One point nine or two. So the first lap, thirty nine nine, and it hasn't. It, it really has been a major fuck up in turn one. That looked a lot better. I'm very sure he can do very good laps with that, and I can't wait to hear what uh, he thinks on the car. I dropped the rear from 5 to 3 already, or 3.5. That is actually what the car made more stable in the long term. Thirty nine six four two. Those laps are just as good as beforehand. Now that can be really drawn up as a conclusion of today's um, today's session. So he started in a 40, 42, 48, 45, mid to high forties. Um, then did the little, the first little adjustment on the drive and dropped into the low 40s, and uh, then took another break, took another reincarnation. Also, um, got another set of tips while being driven. So here I coached live per corner. Whatever I saw, I just told him, and then he started to drop further. Here is where he really gained the. Confidence. So despite the tires heat up and the rear became loose in lap five of this stint, a 40 flat, and uh, just as we were then looking into getting a set, fresh set of tires, he absolutely smashed it. So 39.5. That uh, bus stop, not the best. 
Yeah, I keep going. Or is it a slow down? No, I just shifted too early. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't change gearing at all, did you? No. So you know it yourself what you did wrong, and that is that is good. That is really you are aware of what you're doing, and it's not like doing something. So despite that error, uh, one forty zero again, and yep. that is the actual I'll tell you achievement. All kinds of things I did wrong right there. Too quick. <laughs> But you really can see it means um, the real benefit of today's session is uh, he got constantly into the 39s, at least for the beginnings of the laps. Um, and yeah, would love to, to see him compared in, in the night session. Um, so you may have to do that privately and then give feedback to compare it with the right track temperatures because right now we got. 32 degrees while the dynamic sky sort of pees me off because I, I, I'm pretty sure we had uh, 37 degree uh, 41 degree centigrade here yeah Brendan I think so too I would straight away did that one and a half to up to two seconds probably really two seconds and then he's surely into the 37s, just as we were yesterday. This is his final lap anyway, so uh, he did a little small impact there in the final session or in the final lap, which uh, will deny him a PB. But uh, yeah, I think he's good for another third. Yeah, too too bad, sadly. But yeah, really a great. Um, great step forward he did I'm not sure if the lap is still counting to him it might he might still see it on the counter on the uh, lap time Delta that is what I mean in turn three if you go entirely off the throttle and just wait a little longer you make the car more rotate around it and then have a good exit So time remaining is a minute and 20, that is what he can still do in that lap. Well, next time I need to better set it up with a spot in enabled. Yeah, but he really got a nice balance on in this area. I know I'm not killing it with the lap times, which but I feel a lot more comfortable. You kill it very much, to be fair. I've no idea what the last lap time was, but I guess a low 40. As we've uh, reached the end of the session. Last was a 39.9. I feel better. And I think I think you were right with the setup. I think it's much more manageable. In the daytime, anyway. Well, that sounds great. So, also, um, have a look at your at your practice laps. Um, the the remaining five minutes. And I already told that on the stream, but uh, just look where we started. So, coming from the night, you said you did mid thirty eight. Um, so we did that 1.7 to 1.2 uh, seconds for high temperature. 
And you're starting off in a 142 uh, with a 48, 44 in the first five laps. Um, then I going out, doing a few laps, doing some coaching and doing some speaking. Lap six to eight, you were about to find out and try to adapt to the new driving lines. And I was doing the life coaching per corner, just as you drove. Uh, same lap 10, 11 and 12. And you already see you start to be consistently in the lower 40s right here. Um, before we do a little work on the setup there for 13. So that was when B uh, the setting B06 came in. And this is where you really grip the feel of the car. Even in the fifth lap, lap 18, where you... Uh, where you had the, the rears coming up lit, but you, you had, you know, you managed it, you controlled the slide of the cars there and um, put in a 40.0, and then you absolutely smashed it lap 21 to 29. So that shows you, as you said, lap 30 was a 139.9. Um, that shows absolutely that you improved your driving lines, you improved your awareness and your, your comfortability. In the car and lap 21 29 is like say a good good three quarter second quicker potential wise and also the consistency is pretty much raised and that is exactly what's it about in an endurance race is uh, doing laps consistent um so that is a, a major surplus here it was i would say that is that is the real achievement of today um the increasement of consistency and awareness as well as comfortability your your bus stop looks a lot better than mine uh, after 30 laps of driving. It already looks quite consistently. So that is what can be set as a real benefit of today. Well, I do appreciate it, man. You're welcome. So I, I quickly just fire off the stream. Um, and then we can have a little preset, uh, yeah, post session talk. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, that's going to do it for today, then. Um, so Stan Donnit has quite smashed uh, smashed his uh, his PB. I'm pretty sure, and this is what I will tell you afterwards as well, I'm pretty sure in the night, as Brandon said here on the chat, a 37 is definitely possible. Um, with that setting, with that mindset, with that driving general behavior, you know. Um, and that is a that is a big step forward as he is part of the endurance team for the Simpi uh, Rigmo Tech uh, endurance team for 2019. That is what it is all about: is being consistently quick, uh, consistently quick. So you know where to f put the focus on, which is consistently. Uh, we improved both today, so that was a great session. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know Brendan has enjoyed it, I know uh, Stan Donnett has enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, Stan, this is for you, this is the first part of the report, you will also receive something in written notice, that is disclosed to us too though, um, so yeah, thank you very much all, thank you very much Stan for um, yeah picking up the order on me and sharing the time, and uh, i see you there next time, goodbye. <laughs>